Eating insects, could it be the solution to saving the world? Well, increasingly, it is being touted as such, with many people believing it to be an appropriate response to the growing consumer awareness around the cruelty and environmental impact of farming the animals we currently consume. So how does it compare? And should insects be the future of food? Firstly, let's look at the environmental impact. It is well documented by this point that animal farming is simply not sustainable. Although if you want to find out more about its impact on the environment, then check out this video that's popping up in the top corner right now. So is insect farming a more sustainable option than our current system of animal farming? Simply put, yes. In Thailand, which is currently the largest producer of farmed insects, cricket farming produces half as much CO2 as chicken farming and uses 25% less water. It also uses less land and produces less waste. But how does farming insects compare to farming plants? According to the United Nations FAO, in the US it takes 2.5 kilos of feed to produce one kilo of chicken, five kilos to produce one kilo of pork, and 10 kilos to produce one kilo of beef. However, for insects, it takes around 1.7 to 2 kilos of feed, making it more efficient than other animal products. However, insect farmers will often use poultry feed as it has been shown to make the insects grow quicker, meaning that the feed often contains foods such as maize and soy. Other foods used as feed include different types of seeds, grains, and vegetables. This ultimately means that consuming insects is less efficient than simply consuming the plants directly. And one of the world's leading experts in edible insects and sustainability argued that all animal production systems create inefficiency as they require converting plant matter into animal matter. As the expert stated, from an environmental perspective, plants that can be consumed directly are best used as food instead of feed for insects. Plus, when different types of foods were analyzed for the amount of protein and energy they produce on an area of land the same size, the production of soy, which was the only plant-based food analyzed, was shown to provide over 25% more energy and nearly twice as much protein when compared to mealworms, the second most efficient food type analyzed. The lead author subsequently stated that eating a bean burger is the more sustainable option. However, proponents of insect farming also talk about how some insect farms are using waste food, such as the food that supermarkets normally throw away as feed for the insects. But there are two main issues with insect farming using waste food. Firstly, it needs to be commercially competitive with feeding insects specialized feed, which is the common practice right now. However, a study analyzing the impact of different diets on farmed crickets showed that compared to processed food waste from supermarkets, crickets fed on poultry feed ended up with a 75% larger gain in weight than those being fed the processed food waste, and they gained that larger weight six days faster as well. This means that using a specialized feed is a more commercially viable and efficient option for insect farmers, just as it is for animal farmers who raise pigs, chickens, and the animals that we currently eat. And secondly, there needs to be a consistent supply chain of waste products, which means that we are building a system of food production that is reliant on there being food waste. That means that if the food waste stops, we then have to start growing feed for the insects and we go back to square one. In other words, at a certain point, the food stops becoming waste and simply becomes a necessity for the industry. In effect, it becomes feed. But from a sustainability perspective, we want to reduce the existence of food waste to begin with, not repurpose it and make it something that an entire industry is reliant on. But what about the ethical argument? Currently around 1.2 trillion insects are killed each year to be used as animal feed and human food, with that number set to rise considerably in the near future. This number also doesn't include the additional 2 trillion wild-caught insects who are estimated to be killed for food each year as well. Insects are commercially farmed in plastic trays or bins, where they spend their lives until they reach slaughter weight. They are normally killed by being packed tightly together and then frozen into a block, or by being ground up and turned into a powder. Alternatively, some companies will steam, boil, or suffocate the animals to death. In truth, the ethics of what we do to insects comes down to the insect's capacity to suffer and experience subjectively, in essence their sentience. With the available knowledge that we have now on animal sentience, we might take the position that eating insects is morally preferable because they are less sentient than animals such as pigs, cows, chickens, fish, and the animals that we conventionally consume. However, this argument misses the point. The question isn't, are they as sentient as other farmed animals, but are they sentient in a morally relevant way? 
Firstly, insects have a nervous system and nociceptors, often referred to as pain receptors. They can possess endorphins and have been shown to have the ability to learn, such as avoiding stimulus that they associate with causing a negative experience, or actively choosing certain stimulus that they associate with a reward, such as food. Fruit flies act in a way that suggests that they experience chronic pain, and in the case of crickets, they have been shown to react to receiving morphine, staying in a box that was getting progressively hotter for a longer period than the crickets that were not given morphine. After five days of being given morphine, they even started exhibiting signs of addiction when they were no longer given the opiate. So for all of the scientific ambiguity that does still exist around the sentience of insects, they possess biological systems and display behaviors that make them deserving of moral consideration. But plants, on the other hand, are not sentient. They don't have the capacity to experience subjectively, meaning that morally, the consumption of plants is still the more ethically justified decision that we can make. This becomes especially important when stacked against the sheer numbers of insects that would need to be killed to replace the animals that we currently farm and kill. For example, we would need to slaughter around 363,000 crickets to get the same number of calories that comes from one slaughtered cow. But we slaughter over 324 million cows every single year, meaning that to get the same number of calories that we get from all the cows that we slaughter, we would have to slaughter around 120 trillion crickets instead. Animals who, when given morphine, showed behavioral changes suggestive of the capacity to experience pain. And it would be basically impossible to quantify how many insects would need to be killed to replace the other 80 billion land animals and around 0.8 to 2.3 trillion marine animals that are currently killed for animal products every single year. So while scientific knowledge on insect sentience is still in its early days, what we already know about these animals makes their lives morally valuable and it makes creating a system that would end up slaughtering an entirely incomprehensible number of them a serious moral concern that we are ethically obligated to avoid. For if we choose to ignore what has already been suggested about the consciousness of insects, we may one day, in the same way that we have in regards to the sentience of other non-human animals, realize that their capacities exceed what we once thought. Simply put, Insect farming is not an adequate solution to the ethical or sustainability issues surrounding our current system of animal farming. Growing plants directly for human consumption is still the most efficient use of resources and is also the best way to reduce the suffering that we cause to animals as well.